Hi, I'm AJ. And I'm Patrick. And you're watching Lib Lab. That was a good match until you started using the lever. Hey man, your arms are just fancy levers. It's true. Now I want to go learn about all the other levers around our body. Let's go find out. A lever is a simple machine consisting of a rigid bar and a fulcrum, or a pivot point. Applying a force to one side of the lever arm can allow us to lift a large weight on the other side, overcoming resistance from the weight through mechanical advantage. We can determine the amount of mechanical advantage by calculating the torque or moment of the lever by multiplying the length of the lever arm by the force applied to the lever. If we look at a free body diagram and apply Newton's laws, we can see this in action. If the distance from the applied force to the fulcrum is equal on either side and the forces are also equal, then the lever is in balance. And will not move. But if we move either the location of the weight or fulcrum relative to the lever arm, we can change this equilibrium giving advantage to either side of the lever. By doing this, we can create different classes of levers. In a class 1 lever, the resistance and the force applied are located on either side of the fulcrum. In a class 2 lever, the resistance is located in between the fulcrum and the force, giving the force applied the advantage. And in a class 3 lever, the weight is way out on the end with the force applied between the resistance and the fulcrum, giving the resistance the advantage. This is also the most common type of lever in the body. And you can actually try this out at home. All you need is something for a fulcrum, a lever, and then something to lift. There are examples of these three types of levers all around your body. A type one lever is the kind of lever that you'd see in a teeter-totter, and you see it in our neck muscles that help balance our neck forward and backwards. It's not a really strong lever, but it is really delicate, so that's why it's responsible for fine things like balance. Next up is the class two type of lever. This one is actually the most mechanically advantageous because of where it places the moment arms. No matter what, the muscle that you are contracting is going to be at a longer moment arm than where you're placing the resistance, so it's always going to have the greatest mechanical advantage. This is the same type of lever that AJ used in our game of tug of war and what you'd use in a wheelbarrow. It's the same thing that makes your calf such a strong movement. Finally, we have class 3 levers. These are a really common type of lever around our body, but they're actually also the weakest. Because in these levers the resistance has a longer moment arm than where our muscles insert, the external weight has the mechanical advantage here. So our muscles have to work harder to lift the same amount of weight. Important to note, a muscle fiber is a muscle fiber is a muscle fiber. So these levers actually give advantage to muscles that aren't as big. Your calf muscle, even though it's a smaller muscle than a muscle like your quadriceps, can lift more because it's a type two lever. Your quadriceps are a type three lever, and remember, it has a mechanical disadvantage to the weight that it's trying to lift. So whether you're trying to lift something heavy at the gym or you're trying to beat your friend at a game of tug of war, hopefully now you have a greater appreciation for the levers in your body and outside. Hey all, AJ here. If you liked this episode, please hit that like button and subscribe to Lib Lab so you never miss an episode. Now, this episode is actually part of a big collab that I'm doing with my friends over at WeCreateEDU. If you want to see more from Patrick, the guy that was uh, impersonating me in this episode, check out his channel, Corpus. And if you're, more, if you're interested in the rest of the collaboration, please check out the rest of the playlist right here. Or if you want to see more from Lib Lab, you can click here. Thanks for watching.